What's up, TBU fans? Of course, welcome to our first battle of this week in TBU. That's awesome. We're going up against Rissapau, or, well, as he calls himself, the Phoenix Sun Flores. And before even going in, as you guys can see, we have a bit of a worse quality for this game, but we have the icons this time. So we're using icons throughout the game to kind of help you guys out with which mod is still active. If you guys like the feature, make sure to write it in the comment section down below if you want the more crisp quality then I'm gonna take this one away. Um, sadly, I have to meet them somewhere in between and my PC is not as good as I was hoping for, which means lesser quality, sadly I should say. But with that said, um, as if you see on prep video, you know exactly what I was preparing for. And I did some adjustment, I actually did that. I actually made sure that uh, my Thunder T, which is still scarfed obviously, has Thunder Wave. That's about it. But yeah, <laughs> just in case really. And the Rispo did not bring Snorlax, so that's like, yay, that's awesome, like, I was so sure Snorlax is going to be a part of this team, mostly because Snorlax does solve things for him, a lot, so I felt comfortable going in, um, definitely seeing Bokley film in Garashi, uh, definitely seeing Garashi as a proper lead here, also, I changed Vulcanion's Heatwave for Fire Blast, because in case, if he has Stealth Rock on Garashi, then it's not going to die to Heatwave, it's going to be more defensive. Fire Blast is a better choice. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna leave with your or with my Volcanion and hope that we get something burned. Because I'm feeling your is his lead. So, with all that said, let's go. So, he's gonna lead off with Clefable. And, yes, he has two freaking steel types. So, I'm not gonna go for a potential sludge bomb or anything like that. I'm just going for a steam eruption. And I know Larios is a very, very good switch in overall. And, you know, it is what it is. But you know what? Volcanion is Volcanion, and boom, burn. So we're, we're obviously gonna hit off the season, just as Volcanion being the broken mon it is. No, not really. But we get the burn, you know, that's nice. Uh, Lodios can't really do a whole lot to my guard war outside of Shadow Ball or Shadow Claw. And I was really fearing this could be a Dragon Dance set, so having that in mind, I'm gonna show him guard war. He's gonna see the one coming and actually go for Yurashi. Now here's the thing, I was really hoping would attack me and show whether or not he's scarfed. He is not Scarf, that's the first perk, so we go for Shadow Ball, do massive damage on it, and he goes with Thunderbolt. He actually shows me that he's first of his special, and he did go for Flash Cannon, luckily for me. Flash Cannon will do E350%. Had it Iron Head, he would easily put me in a K range. It wouldn't kill, but you know what, it was up there. So I'm just gonna keep going for Shadow Ball, even if Sukun comes in, which is intimidating, because if this is a Crocune, you know, then I'm kind of a tough position, I'm not gonna lie. And the only thing I can do here is directly switch into Thunderous. Like, even if it says up Call Mine, I should still be in a 2 hit KO area. Uh, I might actually even kill my Thunderous in that session. But that's the best bet I got. So I'm gonna go into Gate Star. And uh, he goes to Call Mine. It's like, yeah, there we go. There's the warning bells. There's the warning bells. This is Call Mining. He's calling. He's Crocune. Torocune. Torocune. That was all that went through my head. Like, I gotta do the damage. I gotta hurt him. I must hurt him. And I must hurt him hard. And luckily, you know, I'm timid, I'm not modest, which means that, like I said, I am still in a 2 hit kill area, but, you know, it's not as comfortable. He just decided to switch out, probably fair in the specs, uh, which I'm not, obviously. Like I said, I was pretty sure he was gonna try to fend off my Scarfer by actually use, since I have Sceptile. Uh, like, he was definitely forced to use Scarfer if he wanted to deal with that properly. And Nordiarashi, as a bit of comfort power, is not that, so I'm actually... the thinking that Lucario must be it. Lucario must be Scarfed. If it's not, then Sceptile actually rips for his team. So we get Clefable out of the way. He had actually sacks that, and he had the Stealth Rocks. How about that? But, you know, it is what it is, and I can't really do anything about it. Lario's gonna come back in here, and, well, Gardevoir is back. Like, what else can I say? Uh, Gardevoir is my number one switch into this, and he hasn't showed anything else. He hasn't even evolved yet. So he actually got into Mega Ball now, so I was very alright, Shadow Ball probably coming my way. Nothing I can do, just gonna have to, have to accept that. And he roofs. Nice. So it doesn't really fare that, you know, obviously he doesn't lose a lot of HP. Uh, so that's really, really cool and awesome in any fashion, really. So uh, I'm just gonna go for Moonblast, and he's actually gonna switch into Sukune. And here is where I think he gets into a very, very terrible realization. It might be, you know, your standard Crocune, but Moonblast from Guard War is nothing to shuff about because this is 100 base attack. That's a 40% hit. 
and there is no way you can recover stall me or red slip talk me through this you're not gonna win this situation and I think Riz realized that and probably not feeling it. He goes by his speed, probably figuring out we'll go to Thunderous, but I'm not going anywhere. And he gets a crit stare, which obviously doesn't really matter a whole lot. Outside of, of course, that I'm being a bit more fragile now than I should be. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep spamming Moonblast and we get the Sugi right away. And like I said there, had he switched to go for Coloma and stuff like that, that would not have helped him. I went modest because I needed to bring the Moonblast, I needed to be strong enough to hurt him hard. And he's going to go to Lucario, I was feeling alright, bullet punch coming my way, and if not, maybe the vacuum wave probably wouldn't kill me, but at least, you know, Thunders does resist both of those stabs, and extreme speed is nothing I was prepping for, and that hurts, it hurts a whole lot actually, and I really can't do anything, I have to sack it, I really, really have to sack Gavestar there, and just bring Sceptile, you know, get in my May Evolution going, and basically try to wrap the game up from there, uh, because now we know he doesn't have any Scarfer. Like, everything on his team is sealed or just does a speed. And that is something you don't want to know. But I'm actually going to go for Protector. I'm not sure I can outspeed him if he's Jolly. I should probably have Scout already that was obviously adamant. that shouldn't really have to worry about it. And I actually get to know later that he has Sword Stance. So he went from Extreme Speed here. And that may very well have been in, you know, in his disfavor there. Not going for a Sword Stance. I could have a substitute, that would be nice, but I have Protect instead. And he switches out to his Lodios, and obviously he's levitating. Here's the thing though, uh, since the burn pushes him in that KO area, I now know Dragon Pulse will kill him. No matter what happens, Dragon Pulse will destroy him. And yeah, that's nice. The superior dragon is on the field, and uh, he's gonna go to skill here. And I was debating, you know, it's very likely it has the Earth Resisting Berry, right? There's no way we just switch that in over Thunders or Tornadoes. So I'm just gonna go for Volcanion, and he's gonna go for Flash Cannon. That's cool. I mean, definitely didn't see that one coming. I'm definitely fearing the Ice Beam. You know what? Flash Cannon, sure, the neutral play. He gets Special Defense Drop, doesn't matter. I'm still Scarfed, and he's gonna get to do another NAS realization that Volcanion does outspeed him, and that's Hiroshi out of the way. And at this point, Extreme Speed will not kill me from the Lucario. He has to go for Thunderous. I can't KO Thunderous, but I can't push him near a KO area. Which is unfortunate, I should probably have Stealth Rocks thinking about it. But you know what? We're pushing him there. We get the burn, because I'm still a Volcanion. And he goes for Hurricane, and what do you know? What do you know? Volcanion get those nifty moves going, and the Tornadoes will fall to the burn. And that, my friend, is pretty much GG, because there is nothing he can do to this Volcanion now that it has full HP. And Volcano's Extreme Speed sadly does not destroy us, but the steam eruption to the Volcano or the Lucario will. So that's obviously a 5 0 victory in my favor. And you know, obviously, I should say this. I really, really should say it. Um, the situation here where he actually, when I go for protecting, he doesn't go for a sword stance. It is a game decisive point. And recently, he talked a little bit about it that whether or not he would win the game had he gone for a sword stance. I feel that's very likely, I really do, but at the same time, I did have 5 mons left. I had, well, obviously, Volcano at that point, which probably would actually die to extremes, but at that point, can't really deny that. It probably is a 50-50 on that, uh, but I still had Scissor, which was banded with Bullet Punch, and I had Barbarical. Barbarical would have forced him for a close combat, which I actually find out later that he had. So, at that point, if he went for a close combat, Bullet Punch would actually successfully kill him at that point. Uh, but other than that, I mean, we have a few situations. Obviously, the Hurricane Miss against Volcanion would change the, um, the differentials between us, but I would still wrap the game up with, of course, Sceptile being with the set in mind. But, uh, yeah, outside of that, I think Trip, uh, or Trip, sorry, Riss. Trip, I'm, I'm thinking about you when I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Uh, but anyway, I think Riss has the right team. Uh, outside, probably actually bringing Snorlax. I do believe Snorlax could have slowed down the onslaught of my team, since my team was so aggressive, it was clearly aggressive enough to actually withstand whatever bulk was going to bring against me. Uh, and I feel that Snorlax was the best man of actually uh, taking that on, not necessarily winning the day by any chance, but definitely would have been able to stop it. And I would, you know, I would have to set set things in motion again and again. I never really lost momentum in this game, and I think that shows. It's only a 21 turn battle. And it's not because Riz plays bad, it is because I 
basically got the game where I wanted and I kept going against him and eventually that takes a toll on the team and Riz was forced to play a bit more aggressive. His Sukun had, of course, an empower rock, so it wasn't a fully cro cro which means it's not as effective, at least not against me, and, but it was forced to do that due to my Vulcanion. So I think his team build is right, I think he does most things right here, but in the end, the aggression of the Onslaught that I'm bringing was simply too much. Uh, I think not having a Scarfer, uh, for his own sake, for of course my Sceptile, it's a mistake, um, it's something that I was definitely pre prepping for because it would work so well against me and seeing that he didn't bring that, I do believe that hurt him but at the same time he didn't bring a physical Hiroshi so it might not have mattered but that was probably the only thing that it didn't bother me, it was more like wow he really isn't seeing this opening that I'm like the can of whoop ass that my volcano opens due to being scarf and maybe without speed his mounts uh, you know, the game turned out the way it did, and like I said, I do believe Riz brings the right team, and I do believe he gets some good predictions right, it just wasn't meant to be at that point. And uh, Riz obviously new to the format, he will definitely find his way here. He's an extremely strong battler, and this is actually the first time I'm beating him, he actually beat me before. So, there is no question about his uh, battle brawn. I just had the better matchup here, and I think it paid off due to aggression alone. Had it had Snorlax and uh, some kind of Scarfer, this game would have turned really, really dangerous for me. Uh, he didn't do that, and that obviously helped me um, survive this game. And uh, that's why we win 5-0. So, you know, that's that's big, that's cool. Uh, but it's it's not a completely fair 5-0. Obviously, should have been a 4-0 with that Hurricane Miss and all. And uh, to risk, you know, thank you so much for this battle. I do believe, like I said there, that you had the right team. It just wasn't the right game. Have you have you beat me a, or faced me on a better day for you? You you might like to take this one home. That I think the team was right. I really do. Uh, everybody has been watching, make sure to check out his side of this battle, which of course been uploaded today too. And check out every other TBU battle that are uploaded. There are actually 16 games going down today. There'll be an 8 between one another, but it's 16 games so make sure to check out each other and make sure to check out the CBU channel for the featured power anchors which will hit off later this week. So with all that said, I want to thank everybody for watching and thank you for supporting Gothenburg Archum and may Odin be with you! <laughs> that was awful.